With Garo Karko, um, we, we met somehow when I was doing the first time in Austria, in, in late 70s. <clears throat> she was the director of the uh, film festival in Austria, and he was a chief redactor of a, of a monthly magazine about the filmmaking. And somehow we, we got very, you know, we got friends. And uh, he was very enthusiastic. His, his dream was uh, to, to, to make movies. I was already a filmmaker with some experience. And it was natural that we started to talk about the production. And the first, uh, first film which we made together with uh, also with, with my another friend, very good cinematographer and uh, film director Bogdan Dziworski from Poland. We we came with this idea about uh, Franz Kramer, and we make this film, which was completely improvised. I always had such uh, approach to uh, at least I was interested in this kind of uh, different forms of experimentations with film. And uh, I always, well, when I was cinematographer, I accepted some kind of work which I could make some experimentations. It means try something what I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, did before. Uh, this was for me always a very important element. Uh, to 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 be to witness to create situations where I was by myself not sure what would be the outcome of that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, it was my, how to say, choice and uh, from the beginning of whatever my adventure with film. Uh, that, you know, making film we have to make something what is unusual. Something what uh, is different. And, you know, I came from the country uh, at least on this time, you know, film for us it was not a way of making money. Let's say it was no, we didn't look at films. Uh, you know, some economical aspect was that important. You know, we, we wanted to make something that was really different, new. You know, some kind of uh, art. Uh, it was uh, for us, I think, the most important. Uh, and uh, uh, Gerald Karp was also, you know, believer of, of <laughs> this kind of values. So it is very natural that we, you know, we, we, we try to work together. It was, you know, some kind of political scandal in in Austria because uh, this was convinced a murder which uh, was kept uh, not in some kind of close psychiatric, let's say, uh, um, hospital, only in a normal jail, the Fengnis. And a group of psychiatrists, you know, decided that it is normal, that whatever he did was caused by some childhood problems and he could be released. And, you know, on the same day he just, you know, did what is in this film. It was an enormous uh, scandal because, uh, you know, it was 20 years ago, I don't remember that, but it was in the old press on the first pages. And uh, it was uh, consequences that, you know, some few ministers resigned and it was, you know, big discussion how it works in, in Austria, uh, health and, and justice system. <clears throat> and uh, or originally, this aspect was uh, seems to be very interesting to make a film. Uh, not only about the case, but about some kind of uh, organization, let's say, of the uh, of, of, of of health and and you know the political aspect was some very also theoretical interesting in the subject. Uh, mm, but the circumstances of the situation, you know, I was. When we uh, start to discuss about this project, I was in Poland, and uh, uh, Geralt was in Austria. His task was to get materials about this case, because you know, in this typed, uh, typed uh, press was very little uh, details. 
Uh, so he was supposed to gather the all real information from inside, from some kind of courts, from police, from psychiatry, from maybe from government. <clears throat> and uh, I couldn't participate in that because, you know, I, my, my, I, I spoke very weak German and it was not, not my part, part of my work. I was in Poland, but in Poland at this time was declared martial law. So we really lost communication. And uh, the problem is that I couldn't leave the, the, the Poland at all. And, and Gerard was, a, was the person which really, through him, I left Poland. He, he, we made some kind of uh, uh, contract, official contract, which was really uh, not completely true. It was some kind of pretext. Uh, I, could I could leave communism you know, in a very, very difficult time. And I came to Austria and, uh, you know, and, uh, okay, I asked uh, Geralt, uh, where's the materials? <laughs> and uh, he informed me that, un un unfortunately, it was it's very difficult to get anything about this case. So we were sitting in the uh, ho coffee houses in, in Vienna, discussing, okay, what to do. I didn't have a big choice what to do, because uh, less or more, you know, he was paying for my bread and, and a place to live. I was still waiting for my family to get um, my family from Poland, my wife and son. And you know, it was a very specific situation between us. You know, I, only what I could do at this time was I was completely depending on this development of the film. But it's not easy to develop such story not having any, any, any you know, details, any material, because uh, this is a uh, rather complex uh, problem to get uh, or to imagine mind of some, some you know, some sick person. Uh, so what to do? We, we, uh, we started to discuss, of course, that maybe some kind of uh, a form, you know, aesthetical form. It is uh, what we try to explore and, and develop a story. So, obviously visuals, some kind of uh, movement, rhythm, you know, everything what is connected with filmmaking, you know. Because film, this is organization of time and move. And, uh, you know, because I was interested in this different forms of experimentations and I thought about the different solutions like, like you know, Photography in extremely big speed source from some uh, um, typical angles of views. You know, I propose or we came together, that I, it's very difficult for me to recall this time, with uh, some m m different uh, methods, let's say, than traditional filmmaking. It's photograph whole movie to mirrors, with using mirrors. It, uh, it allowed to achieve some angles which you cannot make with a normal camera setup, like, for example, from under the ground, from very low positions, or from very high positions, or with close places that where normally you cannot set up camera, you know, through some kind of reflection in the mirror, you are getting big distance. So we came with uh, some kind of uh, main ideas of different devices. Uh, Gerald had luck because he met some amazing person, Hermann Grossenberger. I remember, you know, uh, very, very beautiful mind and uh, human being, which was, you know, mechanical, but um, very interested in art, philosophy, poetry, whatever. And he, he built based on, uh, <clears throat> on, on our drawings, uh, you know, the necessary constructions. And uh, yeah, and we start to build a story. Imagine what with these devices we can do. So the development of the idea and uh, everything was happened was really connected with developing at the same time this, let's say, these this tools for this photography. You know, during the um, conversation when we were thinking about the film. I said, uh, Geralt, I don't believe we cannot get anything about this 
I said, really, believe me, this is, this is taboo. You can, this entrance to the old materials about this Knisek, it is uh, not made public and I could do nothing. So I said, take a car and go to the jail when he was sitting. And we went, it was a town, Krems, the real jail when uh, even this, uh, this uh, Knisek was sitting in this jail at this time. And uh, we just went with the car and we just walked around. And uh, I remember I looked through the you know, keyhole in the main door, uh, what is inside there in this jail. And it came to us some guy, he said, what are you doing here? And he explained that uh, we want to make a film, we are making a rehearsal. He said, oh, I'm the director of this jail. <laughs> Please, I can invite you, I can show you. And we, we really, you know, through some kind of simple rehearsal, really got entrance is something very interesting. At least we were there, and he gave us permit to shoot the, the, the real scenes uh, in, 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 inside the, the jail. Yes, so, uh, little what I introduced to the story that we, at least for example, there, is, uh, there are some simple scenes in the beginning where he is leaving the jail. I ask him, what is doing a, 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 a person which is just released? He's shaving, he's get, getting the, the last food, let's say. He has right to shave in own room. And later he's changing the clothing. Still we are checking, uh, it has to be person completely naked. And this is really, it's very simple, this uh, releasing procedure, which we film at the beginning, it, which is authentic. But we are missing, you know, all other facts in the story. And that's uh, all more our, our inventions. <clears throat> it is pity, I think, that we didn't have more deeper insight. The dialogue, which is this from off, <clears throat> is based on not on the on this of Knisek. It based on <clears throat> real <clears throat> material. <clears throat> Their conversation with psychiatrists which were published after 40 or 50 years <clears throat> of the case of the famous vam vampire from Düsseldorf. This book appears about this time when we prepared this film and <clears throat> uh, I think it was my suggestion to Geralt that Geralt maybe we should use from off some kind of commentary to this film. It was a, uh, in German, it was published book about, you know, 20 years ago about this whole case with all documentation and they released first time, what is interesting, for so many years, this, uh, you know, the full text conversations, uh, you know, with, with, with him, conducted by the two uh, separate psychiatrists in the end of 20s. And many facts, uh, you know, uh, I think in this uh, uh, in this off commentar, they're coming from from Vampir from Düsseldorf. The problem was only that uh, you know one story was missing, not only the material, but was missing as a budget, you know, because this was a completely private production financed by Geralt, and he was you know enthusiast, young man but not with the resources to produce a movie. So he took, you know, some uh, uh, bank loans, you know, I think the uh, guarantee was the house of, of, of his parents. <laughs> and uh, of course the, the cost and everything which we planned was extremely, extremely low. So for example, we never made uh, any tests, you know, with these constructions only just really first text, this is what you see in this movie. You know, it was too expensive to, to really to rent uh, equipment, uh, use a film negative and to, to set up these constructions because, um, you know, this already was huge, huge cost. So it was a full experiment, you know, 100%. Okay, let's go, we will somehow do it during the shooting, yes. We'll try what we can do with that. It was a big problem because photographic with mirror, of course, you have reverse image. 
You can theoretically re-photograph this image through some optical printer, but you know I came with some conclusion that better it will be to photograph whole film through mirrors, even the normal takes, because then the whole material could be reversed in the projector. You know when when. Uh, projection is is putting film material in in projector. You know the the information with on which side is the um, um, soundtrack. And it doesn't matter if emulsion is front or back to the you know to the lens. So this is really the whole film <coughs> to avoid this this mixing of normal takes with the optical print, printer. You know the full film is done through mirrors. In practice, it was pretty difficult because you know this construction was not not very handy, let's say, and uh, and set up with our reality of the crew which we had and all, all financial means. You know, it was rather whole effort, uh, too much effort, I would say, in this production cost really this whole setup of these this devices which we built. You know, it, what in practice it was that really the old takes are done without uh, looking in camera in viewfinder. They are a shadow film blind. Let's say operating camera, not because camera was upside down. You know, it's some kind of mounted mirrors too. It depends on the optics. So it was just you know feeling what the lens will see. But you know, when you are working generally like a cinematographer, you usually you should know. You, you, are, you are getting this feeling very quick, you know. What you can view find that is not necessary all the time. I was thinking for, for a longer time to use to build such construction, you know, very simple. You know, long steel rope, which which is set up between some two points, two towers or two two trees. I'm putting very heavy tension on this on this rope and some carriage with camera. You know, which you can, you know, with some system of pipes because it could be different heights. What's the difference in level on this rope? You know, the camera can travel by itself. You can run with this camera. You know, you can photograph in high speed. And this is uh, everything around this house. Uh, you know, all this kind of motion are shot with with this rope. Uh, the steel rope, which. Uh, has uh, I think in this case has uh, was about let's say 100 meters 300 let's say feet with tension three four tons and you know the uh, simple wheel which on swivel you know is mounted camera and with system with some system of pipes you know you can hold it and knowing circa how camera will would seize it or even could rotate during the uh, during the run or, or walk with such kind of device, you can you can photograph very smoothly. <laughs> Action! Can we build something that, let's say, actor is running and, and camera will rotate around him? And um, this we made in this film, at least a try of such construction. So, this is something like uh, me for Middle Ages. <laughs> You know, uh, armor, which actor has, uh, is carrying on the body, and uh, this was connected to some ring, rant ring, as you can see here, and we built some kind of carriage, which can rotate around this ring. To so this ring was mounted camera, upside down with mirror, with a reflex to see. Like a, a counterweight was aku, and uh, I think even I use some kind of so source of lighting. So uh, this was a counterbalance, but it can freely rotate around the actor. It uh, to make a good effect, it needs much better, you know, properly construction and some there is problem of of uh, you know some cushioning of the whole construction. Some maybe some pneumatic elements will be will be very useful because um, sometimes it was a hard effect very you know to, to shake the camera but uh, let's say actor really can walk and run and uh, of course I was around supporting these rotations sometimes I had to be quicker a little or, or hidden <laughs> very low 
but uh, it gave in some moments some interesting effects. This crane shot it was it was done with a you know normal cranes for the uh, street uh, service of the you know, city for changing the lamps. And uh, just we are talking nicely with the operator of such crane. <laughs> we are making few few you know tries. And uh, we can pretty good synchronize that, you know, they are very good uh, already it was twenty years ago, so I, I, um, I think that right now there are better such cranes. I think they are used for many, you know, for electrical installations. It was not, not nothing specific for filmmaking, it was normal, you know, from industry. Two arm screens. The whole problem was there that necessarily I didn't see the picture from the screen, so I had to guess what the camera uh, is observing. But it came with some experience. I was holding camera and he was operating, and we had, I said, left, right. You know, always few bottles of, of beer helped us. So. The problem sometimes was that. Uh, Geralt expected from me sometimes more that I would be involved in the regime, let's say talking with actors and, and uh, rehearsing actors, and I said, Geralt, <laughs> this is your job, <laughs> you know, so, no, but uh, uh, in this sense, you know, maybe Geralt expected that I will make magic bigger than I made and I expected that maybe Geralt will make bigger magic than he did. You know, it was, it was a very experimental short production and, you know, uh, with very limited resources. This was my dog, Cuba. Later I came with him to the United States and he is playing with my many music videos. It was not train, <laughs> but it was doing to my surprise the things which I never expected that he will do. You know, this is for me is difficult to recall, but I think we oh, about two or three months we the whole period of the of the film filmmaking fi filming of this material took, and later I think about two or three months editing. So editing is a, is a is a concrete task which I have to do, you know, in the particular moment. If you were involved in the production, you know the material is very easy to edit. Well, generally I was editing all my works. You know, the film without editing doesn't exist. And we had a situation that uh, Geralt had a dis financial disaster after this film, totally because of this insurance problems. Uh, I know even this is the reason that he quit smoking because he couldn't afford to buy the, the pack of cigarettes, <laughs> which was good for him, fine, because he was a chain smoker, but uh, he had real problems after this film, you know. Uh, and uh, he was not even able to think about uh, finishing the film, because he had problems. So I was editing, he was, you know, working on all this insurance issue, financial issues, and uh, when a film was edited, he spent a lot of time you know, and music with uh, Klaus Schulze and later recording of this film. And uh, mm, also, uh, he, he chose very good, I think, uh, guy for, uh, fully for making you know, sort of sound effects, Mel Kudbey. Uh, he was a, a Turkish man living in Germany who, who was very, very good in his job. I was so impressed with his work that later, when in New York I make my production steps, I, I especially call him, he came from Germany and he was making uh, live sound effects during my recordings. You know, in the graphic violence, I have problems, of course, when I'm watching films, but not necessarily when I'm doing films. <laughs> the big difference. Uh, you know, in this particular story, mm, I wish there would be much more graphical things, 
you know, because this is only what this film is about. Uh, so I don't agree with that, although after making this film I decided not to make such films anymore. Uh, but maybe from other reasons. Uh, yeah, this is a dark aesthetic, or supposed to be some kind of dark, dark aesthetics. I think uh, uh, this is some possible uh, subject, which is possible to make a very beautiful, let's say, I'm not talking about the art of filmmaking, very beautiful film. Not necessarily this film, such films where we have to laugh or, you know, uh, what we, you know, we should all the time see these such things, but uh, I think because of the some kind of extremes involved always in such material, this is interesting object for some artistic penetration. Theoretical, I think I'm missing this horror in this film. <laughs> showing really much more graphical and maybe with details. This is something what we were missing or uh, we somehow invented the story, how really it was. And uh, our task I think should be, we should make it much more graphical to show the, to convince people what kind of responsibility was of the, whatever the psychiatrist which released this guy. You know, to make a, through the shock to, to maybe uh, start a much more serious discussions about such cases. Now, by the fact that, let's say, in this film will be only, and only this graphical, uh, uh, you know, uh, horror, also will automatically will happen through that some kind of uh, aesthetical, coherency, what I said in the beginning, uh, it will be somehow beautiful, it will be dark, it will be, you know, it will be very, very scary, but, you know, then I think it will, uh, will be much, will be strength of this, of such a film. It, it doesn't mean, let's say, I want to make such films and uh, I want to spend my life, and, but uh, I can imagine that such films uh, could, could, you know, have a very important role. You know, this is always a mystery with uh, uh, some kind of, you know, uh, feeling of the coherency, which is, I think, is a necessary element of something that we are saying beautiful. Uh, it's very rare to observe, you know, and uh, violent to be shown like really what means a violent, that people will understand it. Not like, you know, what we see very often, it's a, it's a violent, some kind of senseless violent, I would say, you know, one shot, boom, head disappears, you know, whatever. You know, that, uh, of a person, you know, which is, uh, I would say, the last argument, that this is in our artillery of telling stories, you know, about the human lives, about um, of our, ourselves, this is the last, the heaviest, <laughs> what we can do to kill somebody in film. But I think this death should be not, you know, for, for nothing, not for entertainment. You know, if, from whatever reason, we are doing that, you know, it has to be shown, if at all, with all consequences of that. How really, let's say, terrible it is. How this is, uh, how, is uh, how awful we are also, humans. So, uh, I don't know many films showing a, a real horror and terror uh, on the way uh, like it should be shown, in, in my opinion. So I can, for example, imagine a film, let's say, about the real horror of Holocaust, 
But really, how it was, you know, the only about this, you know, I, it was not done yet film such, you know, have scenes, uh, amazing scenes I saw in Schindler, some kind of shooting, uh, you know, killing um, uh, some Jewish woman, I remember, just like that, one second, you know, blood is, you know, uh, but, you know, these images and uh, the scenes were, were daily, you know, there was not really one, two, three, four events, you know, there was, there was uh, uh, psychopaths which was killing for the pleasure, you know, 50, 60, 80, 80 persons, uh, you know, per day, just for nice walk before the, uh, before the, you know, breakfast. We don't have these images, so we never will understand uh, what really, how terrible it was, yes. Uh, element of the of the reality, you know. I think every of us is observing that, uh, you know, how it looks normal accident, how it looks uh, event in uh, what is a real, um, real, uh, let's say, bank robbery. You know, if if people are watching movies and later will witness real robbery, they will say, "Oh, nothing really happened because it was not like in the movies." You know, in the films, everything is done with some kind of, uh, uh, this is really some, um, very far from, from, from real world. We are starting, when we are starting to believe, oh, this is, film imitates reality, is something wrong. You know, I saw several times in my, my life, uh, I saw the real documentary material shot, shot by, let's say, police or, in some very important, even political moments. And later I saw, let's say, somebody make a film about it. And I think the much more uh, uh, convincing and much more terrible really was the, the true material, which, you know, actors, take, people taking really, uh, the real actors, it means the, the uh, people uh, in the real world, were very bad actors when we were judged that from some you know film point of view or filmmaking. It was terrible lighting there, it was terrible, you know, everything was actually terrible, but it's true. And somehow you can see in this in this uh, um, this somehow uh, amateurness, you know, something what is much more scary, could be much more scary, you know, much more uh, uh, because you have maybe you can achieve the really you know, the better illusion of it is real, it is true. But I, I'm not sure, and I don't think we succeeded because of the obvious some kind of acting problems there in this film with all, all personal situations and you know many other things which are just not proper done. Many, many films, many movies, which we think, uh, you know, maybe amateurs are thinking that, you know, what was in this take? Nothing special. Probably come around the, on the, just on the dolly and uh, the guy is sitting behind the table, you know. No, no, no. Sometimes there are very com complex constructions. Sometimes, you know, the, the, the actor is moving on some kind of uh, dolly and camera and this is some, something magical which is not necessarily visible in the picture, but is creating a specific atmosphere, specific visual effect. You know, I'm a filmmaker. It means, you know, I started like a cinematographer, but uh, parallel to my cinematographic work, I make my films, which was uh, experimental films <clears throat> in different techniques, using different techniques, and you know, this completely took over. You know, I'm making my own films. Uh, working like a cinematographer, uh, because I work on several productions, you know, I always find cinematography something that's a very simple job. Somehow, very, uh, it's easy to invent interesting takes. You know, in my opinion, it's easy to make something, you know, very effective, you know, visually, but uh, I choose uh, to make something much more complex than that, you know, some special effects, generally, and uh, in a different way, not using film, uh, you know, using uh, high definition, electronics, 
computers and you know this was uh, it was it is my choice my, my you know uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that uh, because I, I have some kind of program that I will not think and I will not make a let's say horror movie no only uh, my ideas rather are around uh, co concrete ideas which I'm working on, but they are around other objects, around subjects. You know, I think that any kind of, uh, from any substance, you can make something very interesting. But it, this is a matter of the coincidence, what we are doing, you know, who are meeting in life and uh, how is our uh, life developing. Yes. Last time I saw today, because I have you know three quarters of this film, and I think I look first time since uh, at least fifteen years. And nothing changed in my you know my viewing because you know uh, I, I, watching the film I remember immediately you know details about every situation, every scene, and I have the same you know the same feeling when I had on this time you know which uh, you know I'm saying when my say is if we can achieve in our film 5% of our idea this is success <laughs>